Like every great story of success, Valley Queen Cheese had humble beginnings. This story begins in two small villages in Switzerland, Rogueville and Urnash, where Alfred Gonsenbach and Alfred Neff grew up. Although they grew up just 20 miles away from one another, the two Alfreds never met until 4,000 miles away in Wisconsin, they made each other's acquaintance at a cheese company. They immigrated from places that didn't have the opportunity. My father, you know, he spent his years as an apprentice and eventually became a, a licensed cheesemaker in Switzerland. And he was set out to make cheese and he would basically have a job and really find out when he got there uh, they didn't really want a cheesemaker, they just want a hired man to, to do a bunch of things and around the house and to chop wood and so forth. And there was really no good opportunity for these gentlemen to pursue their interests. My father's father was, had a small textile operation in this little village in Switzerland, but my father wanted to be a farmer. Young Swiss growing up, and they were from the German-speaking part of Switzerland. They got farmed out to the Italian and French parts of Switzerland to learn those other languages. That was just part of the, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. My father related, he was in the French part of Switzerland with a farmer who basically treated him like a slave. You know, worked him like 16 hours a day and uh, it was just terrible. He, you know, he finally got out of there. Somewhere along the line, he met a Swiss guy who'd, who'd come to the United States and prospered. He told my dad, if you want a good life, you gotta come to America, and that's where he headed. The two Alfreds became business partners. But like Switzerland, Wisconsin already had quite a few cheesemakers. Alfred Gonsenbach was on his way to Montana to establish a new location for their company when he stopped in Millbank, South Dakota for gas. We started out in Minneapolis. We got as far as Millbank. It was about seven o'clock in the evening. We stopped at the filling station and there was three guys in there. They didn't see they didn't see a Wisconsin license every day, same days, you know. And then they wanna know where we come from, where we go. We told them the story. They says, and one of them says, "You stay right here. We like to have a cheese factory here." And that was 1928. Thank God he didn't get any farther. I'm happy we we ended up here. You know, really. It was, it was not skill, it was you know, kind of just bare luck, but it worked, you know. Valley Queen Cheese officially began operations on March 1st, 1929. The one milk can brought in that day was accidentally spilled down a drain, but milk supplies increased steadily, and the Alfreds, who went by Gonzi and Shorty, went to work making cheese the old-fashioned way. Years ago, you don't have anything by hand or strength. Now we got machines for everything. We got computers and everything else, you name it, you know. The hard work is all taken out of it. Look at farming, it's the same way. Yeah. So that's the, I guess that's called that progress, you know. You know, just like so many of our other industries in our country, I mean, the manual labor has slowly, gradually disappeared and it's been mechanized and automated. But the basic recipe is the same. It's just being uh, done in a different way and in larger quantities. And, uh, you know, back then they'd make Longhorns 12, 13 pounds, you know. Now we make 700-pound uh, boxes of cheese, you know. And it's just different, but the basic principles have not changed. Unfortunately, the Great Depression was right around the corner. Well, the worst years was the 30s. Depression and the drought yeah. together, you know. It didn't rain, hot wind blew day and night from the southwest, you know. The air was full of dirt. Three o'clock in the afternoon, it used to get pitch dark on Main Street, you know, all dirt in the air. 
but uh, we all survived somehow, you know. And that it lasted was, four years. It was rough, it was rough. Yeah. Valley Queen Cheese made it through the 1930s. The 1940s and 1950s brought expansion, improvements, mechanization. And in the late 50s, Max Gonsenbach and Rudy Neff, the second generation, joined the family business. Well, I came back in the fall of 57 after spending a couple years in the Army. It was a pretty well manual operation. There might have been six to eight, ten employees. And uh, I just started working. I mean, uh, and slowly migrated into maybe doing a little bit of office work, a little bit of bookkeeping, and then Max site came on a couple of years later. But the milk supply then was, was kind of growing and we had to make some changes. And we slowly did, and uh, we expanded the operation quite a bit then in that, that early 60s area. I remember sitting down with the fathers and they said, boys, he said, we are gonna to have to make some changes here, equipment-wise, and let's invest some dollars. And he said, you know, at our age, we're not too interested in doing that anymore, but if you two want to continue this business on, we'll help you at the bank. It was not easy to amass $300,000. Both banks in town participated. Within three, four, five years, we were out of debt, never looked back at that, I mean, but, and at all times trying to be more efficient, you know, doing it with a little less labor, more, ma more machines than men, you know. That was a degree of mechanization and changing and uh, upgrading the operation. The partnership between the Alfreds was steadfast and trusting, without much division of labor. You know, they're, they're working together out in the plant. So are we gonna do it Gunsy's way or Shorty's way? So they kind of did, well, one week we'll do it one guy's way and the next week we'll do it the other way. The end result was the same. But it was just, just the way they did things. The way operations were very small in that area, so they were basically just making cheese. They were cheese makers and had a couple guys helping them, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, you cleaned up and washed up, everything went home. Max and Rudy forged a strong partnership as well. By then, Valley Queen had grown, and splitting up management responsibilities was necessary. I had a desk here, Max had a desk there. We had a room divider in between, you know. It was usually open. We never closed it very seldom, you know, and uh, there was nothing that was private that way. I mean, we each kind of took care of our areas and made the day-to-day the -day decisions that had to be made. We really took care of the whole cheese operation as well as milk procurement side, and I was involved on the wayside and the maintenance engineering. Max is far more mechanical. I was, I was very happy he was taking care of that end of things. You are far more visionary than I was, and also you've got great numerical skills and as far as these things work. Any area that required some kind of a decision that was gonna be a thing, we get together and make a decision. Oftentimes, if we weren't sure how to handle something or something wasn't going right, we said, we need some help from the outside. We did not hesitate to, get, to go to the outside to get expertise to help us in any of these areas. The truly modern era began in the early 80s. Important updates were made, experts were hired, and productivity skyrocketed. The company received buyout offers, but decided to stay put, making a long-term commitment to the farmers, workers, and community of Millbank. All the way along, we were always very innovative. We were never behind the curve. So we had a reputation out here that I think was pretty good, you know, and uh, the, we were leaders in the industry and people respect us and they came out and we shared information with some of our friends in the business and vice versa, you know, it worked out very well. Our main competition was that of a, the cooperatives. We were a privately held firm. Uh, we are proud of it and would like to see the business continue as such. And there are not that many private operations left anymore. One of the goals I think that we set in looking ahead was to be the premier private cheese operation in the country. It's a lofty goal. In 2003, Rudy Neff and Max Gonsenbach received the prestigious Laureate Award from the National Cheese Institute. I regard that as the highest honor the, uh, that, that I have ever been awarded. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was truly significant for, for us uh, to be recognized.
Today, Valley Queen Cheese is a regional economic powerhouse. We collect milk from 75,000 cows, helping South Dakota's dairy industry thrive as it generates over $2.4 billion in economic activity for the state. We provide jobs in Northeastern South Dakota and contribute to the region's economic development. Because of innovative equipment and processes, we produce as much cheese in one day now as we did in 10 days in 1970. In fact, each day, four million pounds of milk is processed in our state-of-the-art facilities and turned into 400,000 pounds of cheese. Liquid cream is shipped to other companies that make cream cheese and ice cream while whey, a valuable co-product, is dried to create lactose or whey protein concentrate. Valley Queen Cheese supplies cheese to major brands, and our cheese and co-products travel to destinations worldwide. Growing and thriving since 1929, Valley Queen Cheese looks forward with excitement to finishing our first century and we're filled with anticipation, hope, and determination for the years ahead. <laughs>